But you know, when you're now in your prime, you're you know, 18 years of age, 19 years of age, 20 years of age, and you're living here in the West, you can do and commit every sin under the sun, and there is no one in this country, not even your mother and father, that can stop you from doing it. Now, if you decided now to walk out of this gathering, and let's say, you know, go towards Ibrox, and, you know, one of the clubs there, change your garments, and mixed in with the uh, local Saturday night regulars, and did everything under the sun, who could stop you? In this country, who could stop you? No one. If you wanted to take alcohol, who could stop you? You want to take a spliff or snort heroin or cocaine, who could stop you? You want to go joyriding, who could stop you? You wanted to mess around with, you know, Jamila, Janet, or Jane, who could stop you? No one. But you don't do it. By the grace of Allah, you don't do it. Why don't you do it? Because you know you're a believer. And you know it will bring about the displeasure of Allah even though everything is accessible to you, you're in a position to commit sin, you have the money and facilities available to you, and then you suppress your desire and you give preference to Allah and His Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look what Allah is prepared to give you in return. My young friend, you will be a king. You will be under the shade of Arsh of Allah the day there is no shade other than this shade. You will be like this with Allah. Guys, you know, if anyone's connected with Prince Charles, you know, how he walks on the street, yeah, I'm doing it. And you know, if he was connected with Barack Obama, you know, if Barack Obama were just to ring him on his mobile phone, boy wouldn't sleep for a year. And he'd be telling the whole world, you know me? Yeah, I'm connected. Uh, you know this Barack Obama? He keeps on ringing me. I mean, I just don't know why. And uh, He just doesn't get enough of me. You know, you feel so important when you're connected with big people. Yeah, are you going to get anyone bigger than the Lord of the Arshan Kursi? Are you going to get anyone bigger? Than the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi. Yar, never mind one Obama. You bring zillions of Obamas. Yeah? Where are they in comparison to the one, the only, the master, the possessor of the Kun Fayyakun, the one in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir, has the power to do as he pleases when he pleases. And this will be your connection with Allah. Yeah, if you're sitting like a king, when the whole of mankind is suffering on a day, and if this is your situation on a day when Allah will be angry like never before, what do you think Allah has in store for you in paradise? You have the master, you have the key to everything that exists out there. It's as simple as that. So that is the youngster that spends his days of youth realizing, recognizing his purpose and fulfilling his purpose. So I was telling you on the plane of resurrection, zillions and zillions of people, you can barely breathe, you can barely put your feet on the ground and then Allah has brought the sun close and literally whether it's a span away or whether it's one mile away, what do you think will become of you? You will sweat like you've never sweated. How much sweat? Turn to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everybody will be in sweat different. Some people will be in sweat up to their ankles. Some people will be in sweat up to their knees. Some people will be in sweat up to their waist. Some people will be in sweat up to their chest. 
and some people will struggle to keep their heads above their own sweat. Yeah, can you imagine that much sweat coming from your body that you are literally drowning in your own sweat? And how much sweat will each person be on, in? All pendings on the sins that he's committed in the dunya. It's as simple as this. You know, when I said, you're the maker of this movie, you're the director, you're the producer, you're the star. My friend, you dictate how you want it. And that's how it will become. You want to be under that much sweat that you can barely keep your head above? Then you know what? Yeah, enjoy yourself. You know, they say you only live once. Do what you can. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Commit the sin. Disobey him. And if you're man enough to commit the crime, then you better be man enough to do the time. And believe me, you know, these jails in the dunya, and I call them seven stars here in this country. Because you get better facilities inside prison for some people than you get here outside. But even then, I've seen guys, and I know guys, big, big guys, bigger than you and I, big timers. You know, when they're inside, my, my language here, even the peshab comes out. They can't, they can't handle it. They can't tolerate it. They can't tolerate seclusion, confinement. If you can't tolerate these so-called seven-star prisons in this country, and believe me, they're seven-star when you compare it with you know, prisons in Pakistan. <laughs> you, you go into Pakistan and you'll know. These elders will tell you. You know, in Saudi Arabia, and you compare it to prisons in, in, in these type of countries, you'll know that these are seven-star. And if we can't even you know, tolerate something like this in this country, where do you think we're going to be able to tolerate one second of Jahannam. Just one second. So the more sins that you commit in the dunya, the more sweat you'll be in. Those that committed more sin will be in their, up to their knees. Those that did more to their waist, those that did more will struggle to keep their heads above. And it doesn't come to an end. What I want you to bear in mind at the same time is, كَانَ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةً how big is this one day of judgment? 50,000 years long. This one day in which Hisab Kitab will take place, reckoning, Allah will hold to account, Allah will question, Allah will judge. In comparison to the days of the dunya, it is 50,000 years long. Now, I want to ask you a question here. How long do you think you're going to live? What, 20 years? 50 years? 80 years? Let's say, mashallah, you were the lucky one and you knocked a century. A hundred years you lived for. What's, I mean, what's that in comparison to the akhirah? What is a hundred years in comparison to 50,000 years the day of judgment. There's no comparison. The life that you live, even if you're lucky enough to live for 100 years, it's nothing. And how sensible is it that this life that you live for 100 years, which is nothing in comparison to the akhirah, but you disobey Allah, and you are prepared to suffer 50,000 years long. This is just the, the one day. After this, there's Jahannam. And believe me, in Jahannam, for those that didn't believe, there is no such thing as end. There's no such thing as end. You know, this is beyond our comprehension because we do qiyas upon dunya. We analyze everything looking at the dunya. And you're thinking, you're sitting here, yeah? How long can one actually suffer for? Because here and now, if I were to just grab someone, let's say Molana, for example, it isn't reality. And let's say we grab Molana, start slapping him about a bit. Yeah, you know, like the lads do. Start slapping Molana about a bit. How long, how much can we slap him about? How much pain can we actually cause? There's only a limit because, you know, after that, he'll die. That's what happens in the dunya. You know, you can only 
persecute or punish a person to a limit and after that he will die so you're thinking you know what on the plane of resurrection or in the akhirah in jahannam how much can you actually punish a person let me tell you my young friends there is no death in the akhirah there is no death allah will slaughter death on the day of judgment when people of jannah going to jannah and jahannam going to jahannam uh, death will come in the form of, uh, um, of a ram and allah will slaughter it people of jannah allah will say you will remain forever and ever and ever and allah in, in works miraculously because he gives examples in this dunya i've got, actually got a friend whose son suffers from an illness in this country and the illness he suffers from is that he feels no pain Ajeeb. he can fall off a balcony and break all his bones but he won't cry he doesn't feel pain you can take something poke him with a needle he doesn't feel pain he can bleed but he doesn't feel pain you know that is when i understood the akhirah just as allah can eliminate pain where you can cut a person he feels no pain allah can increase that pain to levels which you and i can never comprehend and at the end of it there will be no death it will just increase 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 and keep on increasing and there will be no death there will be no end so when you're standing on that plane of resurrection and hopefully you won't be like this but the general masses those that disobeyed allah on top of one another the sun above your heads and now you're drowning in sweat then now the doors of hell allah will open can you imagine and i've just told you about jahan i've just told you about the fire of hell that it's been burning for thousands and thousands of years allah is preparing it for those of his servants from the humankind and jinn kind that were disobedient allah is preparing it for these people fire of hell is black how much heat do you think that fire how hot it is and when allah opens the doors of jahannam and the hot air blows on your faces whilst you're on that plane of resurrection tell me what will become of us may allah protect us you know what i'm saying to you guys the way i'm describing it to you it's not even a zillionth of reality why because i'm adis i'm weak how can i actually you know truly bring the true description of what's going to happen on the plane of resurrection i can just sort of give you a guide an example yeah i can talk about this all day long but you'll never comprehend it but you know what if i just take a needle if i talk about pain you'll never comprehend pain and i can explain it for a million years but you know if i take a little needle here and now and start poking you with it prodding you with it now you'll understand pain a little needle here and now if i start poking with you with it within one second the damage that one poke would do my young friends me explaining it for a million years what do that damage and you won't understand what i've said in a million years as much what you will, what you will understand when i just take that needle once and prick you with it you'll jump so the human mind cannot comprehend truly comprehend what i'm saying the doors of jahannam will open and the hot air will blow your faces and the smell prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the smell will be worse than a rotten corpse yeah you know when a, a mouse or something dies inside our houses and it's under the floorboards we can't find it you know that stench that decay that smell you can't tolerate it you can't live in that house while that mouse is decaying it's you know it's, it's under your floorboards you can't find it it's it's all that smell is awful can you imagine the worst corpse ever found in the dunya the stench and the smell on the plane of resurrection will be worse than any corpse 
ever found decayed on the dunya. And you will suffer like you've never suffered before. How long do you think you'll stand there? How long do you think you'll stand there? My young friends, it won't be a day or two. I'm talking about dunya days. You'll stand and you'll stand. And you'll suffer and you'll suffer. And you'll cry like you've never cried before. And you know when no tears remain in your eyes, tears of blood will flow from your eyes. Tears of blood so much so that streams and rivers will begin to flow because of the blood that will come out your ears, uh, from your eyes. And you know what? Allah will not even look at you. Allah will not even look at you. Forget the judging. Judgment hasn't even taken place. You know when judgment will take place is when the Nabi of Allah, our Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes and falls in prostration before the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi and begs, for, uh, begs to Allah, praises Allah like Allah has never been praised and says, Ummati, Ummati, Wallah, I beg you have mercy upon my Ummah. Come and judge them. Only then will Allah come and judge. This is before even judgment takes place. And when you're suffering like this, like never before, you'll begin to utter nonsense. You know, when you can't tolerate things, people say all sorts. You know what you'll begin to say? The hadith says, people will begin to say, Ya Rabbi, irsaluka bi ilan nar ahwan alayya mimma ajid. Oh Allah, forget the hisab kitab. Forget holding me to account. Just throw me into Jahannam. Irsaluka bi ilan nar ahwan alayya mimma ajid. Oh Allah, throw me into Jahannam. I can't tolerate this. The punishment of Jahannam is a lot lighter and a lot easier than this. It's too much for me. People will begin to say this because they can't tolerate, not because in reality, the punishment of the day of judgment is lighter. I mean, the punishment of Jahannam is lighter than the punishment of the day of judgment, not because of this. They'll be saying this because they can't tolerate it. Yet my young friends, believe me, there is no comparison between the day of judgment and Jahannam. There can never be. Jahan, day of judgment, even though it's 50,000 years long, one day it will come to an end. But the punishment of hell for those that didn't believe will never, ever, ever come to an end. So punishment that will never come to an end. What comparison is that with punishment that will come to an end. But you'll begin to say this. It's 10 to 10. When I read Ru Sharif. <laughs> 45 minutes. Molana thinks I need, you know, I'm staying here over tonight. I need to get back to Bradford. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm going to call it an end here. Because the objective, by the grace of Allah, I could go on for ages. You know, going on for ages doesn't serve my purpose. You know, you, like I says, you know, the day of judgment is not an excitement. You know, I'm not here to excite you. And I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to remind myself of a reality. And that reality will soon come. And I'm here to remind you of that reality. That we need to prepare for this reality. I ask, what would you like? Under the shade of the arsh of Allah, sitting like a king? Under the shade of his throne? Would you like that on the day of judgment? And for those that were obedient, believe me, the day of judgment will be like this, simply. That's how quick it will pass. It's like, it didn't even happen. And what I've described, this is just the beginning. I haven't even gone through it. This is just an intro. Or would you like this? Surely, it would be to be under the shade of the arsh of Allah. But my young friends, we need to realize what we're doing here. You know, the razzmatazz of the dunya gets the better of us. 
We're all weak. You know, we see these beautiful cars out there and our jaws drop. We see these beautiful women there going past and I, our eyes pop. And we hear the music blaring and our ears start moving and our hands start moving and our legs start moving. We're weak. The dunya gets the better of us. But my young friends, we need to realize who we are and what we are. We're believers in Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah created us for a purpose. We need to realize that purpose. What are we doing here? I mean, as Allah just places on the dunya for us to do as we please, what we please, when we please. I mean, look at, look at, look at around us. Give me an example of one thing within this universe that has no purpose. One thing. Yeah, never mind the universe, just look around us here in this room, in this Jamaat Khana. One thing within this Jamaat Khana that there's no purpose behind it. Look at the member that I'm sitting on. Is there a purpose behind this? It's serving this purpose, I'm sitting on it. Look at the mic in front of me. Does this have a purpose? It has a purpose. The camera before me has a purpose. The clock there has a purpose. The blinds there have a purpose. The musalla there has a purpose. The mobile phones that you've got in front of you has a purpose. The carpet that you're sitting on has a purpose. This bag has a purpose. This shawl has a purpose. This socket has a purpose. This radiator has a purpose. Those chairs have a purpose. Those coats have a purpose. This screen has a purpose. You will not find one thing within this room that doesn't have a purpose. And if you take it further and you look outside on the way home, from now to home, look around you, find me one thing and I'll become your gulam. I'll kiss your forehead in public. One thing that has no purpose behind it. In the entire universe, there's not a single thing that doesn't have a purpose. Even the items that we use, we're recycling them. They have some purpose. When everything within this universe has a purpose, do you think you, Abdullah, Abdurrahman, Ahmed, insan, the best of Allah's creation, the best? Allah says, Adam. We've honored the children of Adam. Everything within this universe has a purpose. Allah is saying, do you think that you were created for Abbas without any purpose? So that you could do what you want, when you want, and that you will never come and stand before me? Is that what you think? It can't be. It can't be. When everything within this universe was created for a purpose, surely Allah's best creation was also created for a purpose. And what was that purpose? You know, Allah didn't leave, even though Allah has given us intellect, but Allah didn't leave it to our intellect for us to guess and get it wrong. No, no. Allah said it crystal clear. Crystal clear in the Quran. And look at the way Allah put it. So beautiful. Allah did not say, okay, I created man for worship. Allah didn't say that. Why? Because had Allah used the words, خَلَقْتُ insan لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah could have said that. I created insan so that they worship me. You know, insan is very clever. He could have said, yeah. Allah says in the Quran, Allah created me for worship and to enjoy myself and to socialize and to wine and dine and to play football and this and that. Insan is weak. Insan will look for ways out. Look at the words Allah uses. Allah Negates, he says, Wama khalaktu jin. I did not create man and I did not create jinn illa except liya'budun for one thing. That is that they worship me. So you were created for no other reason. Not playing, not socializing, not accumulating the dunya. No. You were only created for one purpose. That is you bow down and you acknowledge Allah and you worship him. And whatever helps you in worshipping him, you're allowed to do. 
Zahir Bata, you need food because food will give you strength. And with strength, you can wake up during the night and prostrate. You can do that. You need a roof over your head. Why? Because you need a place to sleep. Because if you get some rest in, you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything that helps in fulfilling this purpose, you can do. But other than that, you can't do. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this. And we need to realize this purpose. Guys, we're only here for a few days. And believe me, at this moment in time, they're dropping young. They're dropping young. Guys are fit as fiddles. Yeah? Knocking out, you know, you know, 10 miles a day on the treadmill. But you know what? All of a sudden, pop goes the heart and your history. Only takes one second for you to drop. You know, I keep on saying this wherever I go. You just don't know what's around the corner. You're planning all sorts. And you know what? The angel's laughing. Why is he laughing? Because you're planning, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to buy this business. Then I'm going to buy this shop. Then I'm going to marry my second wife and do this and that. And the angel's laughing his head off because the angel knows he's going tomorrow. He knows he's going tomorrow. And the angel's thinking, yeah, oh, you fool. Why don't you realize? Why don't you realize? So you're plotting and planning and Allah's already plotted and planned for you. You're fine. All of a sudden, you realize you've got a stomachache. You've gone to the doctors. And prior to this, you've always been fine in good health. You've had a scan. And you know what? You've got cancer. Six months, you're gone. History. It can happen to you. It can happen to me. I'm sitting here before you at this moment in time and I'm talking. I swear by Allah, I don't even know whether I'll get home tonight. You know, I might be laughing and think I need to get back. But you know what? That's not the sad reality. I might not even get back. It's foolish of us to think that we're going to be here. Never mind Qiyamah, the end. Our Qiyamah, our end, is a lot closer. And we don't know when that can be. And when that end happens, there are only two outcomes. Imma ilal jannati, imma ilal nar. Either you will go to heaven or either you will go to hell. It's your choice. You only live once. What I would advise is don't live to regret. That you say on that day, oh Allah, give me another chance and I will be a believer. I'll show you I will be a believer. I'll show you I'll prostrate. Because with Allah, once your soul leaves the body, the game comes to an end. The game comes to an end. And He's the all merciful right up to your soul leaving your body. Irrespective of how you've lived up to now, my young friend, there's still chance to make amends. Here and now, it will only take you not even 10 seconds to repent. You can do it here and now. From the bottom of your heart, you promise Allah, you Allah, whatever I've done in the past, you know my weaknesses and I'm weak. Oh Allah, I beg you, overlook them. Here and now, stop doing any more wrong. And promise Allah, you Allah, now in the future, I will do no wrong. I swear by Allah, if you do that here and now with sincerity, you will leave this gathering and return free and pure from sin, just like the mother gave you birth. If you make tawbah from all sins here and now, and it only takes two minutes with Allah, and Allah is the Arhamul Rahimin, the Akramul Akrameen, the Ajwad al Ajwadeen, He can give you more love than your mother can ever give you. Balke, all mothers put together. What is comparison is thereof with Allah's love? He's the Arhamul Rahimin. Here and now, if you turn to him and make amends, Allah is prepared to embrace. The sad thing is, are you prepared to embrace Allah? Are you prepared to turn to Allah? I'll let you make the choice. Allah, give me the tawfiq to make the right choice. Allah, give you the uh, tawfiq to, uh, to make the right choice. 
Guys, we're living in difficult times. And by the grace of Allah, we're so fortunate here that we're free from all calamities. Whereas the Ummah is suffering like it's never suffered in history. One thing to another, to another, to another. God knows what will be caught up in tomorrow. This is why it's important that we take advantage of our well-being and we make amends with Allah and we turn to Allah and we make dua for ourselves and we make dua for all our Muslim brothers that are suffering in every corner of the world. Allah give me the tawfiq. Allah give you the tawfiq. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillah.